In this video, we will relate band lengths to moments of inertia. When considering a band with band length or zero between two masses m1 and m2, we can say that this is equivalent to a mass known as the reduced mass rotating around a sphere of radius or zero. And this makes considering moments of inertia much easier. The corresponding moment of inertia is equal to the product of the reduced mass and the square of the bond length, with the reduced mass being defined as shown. Let's apply this to an example. Here we are given a bond length for CO, and we wish to calculate the moment of inertia. To relate the two, we need to calculate reduced mass. We can calculate the individual masses of each atom in the SI unit's kilograms as shown. By expressing the atomic mass in kilograms per mole, and hence in kilograms. Repeating for the second atom, oxygen, we can now calculate the reduced mass. Use the units to help you remember the format of this formula. The product is on top, the sum is on the bottom. Now that we know our reduced mass, we can easily calculate the moment of inertia by including our bond length in metres. What about the other way around? Here we are given the moment of inertia for HCl and wish to calculate the bond length. In this example, I'm going to calculate the reduced mass in a different way, calculating the reduced mass firstly in gram per mole, and then converting to kilogram per mole, and then to kilograms. Either approach shown give us, gives us the same result. So knowing our moment of inertia and reduced mass, we can rearrange the formula for R0, and hence calculate the bond length in metres, and if you wish, express in picometres. So how do the moment of inertia and bond length relate? Well, clearly from the formula, I increases with the square of R. But we can see here, even with a longer bond, HCl has a smaller moment of inertia. In other words, the reduced mass values play a significant contribution. This is useful as we will see when talking about isotopic studies.